Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So today we will be looking at something different. So far we've been running a 10 week long program called Build Your Own Research Internship in AI and although that has been focused more towards people who already have some basic knowledge of AI and applied machine learning and now they're just applying it to real world problems and we are currently in week seven. But today I wanted to bring to you something different. It's more about if people are in another sector but not really working in AI. So if you have some understanding of basic math, probability theory, but maybe you're working in, in, in another sector such as finance or maybe just software engineering and you wanted to know how you can actually get into more AI, applied machine learning. So then I wanted to offer some tips and tricks in order to do your market research, in order to understand what it, it is required to actually get into more AI geared expertise. And I will tell you steps uh, how to go about it. And I wanted to show two examples today. Uh, one is about finance. So if you are in a financial realm and you want to have more AI, or if you've been into software engineering and you want more AI. If this is of interest to you, please like and subscribe to this channel. I wanted to start today's session by giving a big thank you to all of the, the people who have joined me on my journey so far and the community that we've been able to build and raise in YouTube. Uh, it's, it's amazing to, to get all your emails about your responses, about uh, the kind of comment or the, the kind of content you want me to, to keep creating. Uh, I would encourage you all to, to keep, please reach out to me if you have any questions and if, if you want me to, to you know, tailor my content towards a certain domain, uh, I would love to hear more about that. So I'm reachable over my email uh, in LinkedIn and also I'm available on Instagram. My handle is Career Coach Sohini. So please do check it out and please do contact me uh, so that I can help make content that helps the community. All right. So you are already a working professional in one domain and you would like to get more into an AI based domain or applied machine learning domain in order to increase your skill level and maybe even uh, for the opportunity to open up to a better, bigger job market. So if that is the state that you're in, the, 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 the steps in order to start your job search is no different than, you know, a standard AI job search. And I will be linking that video right uh, about here. So the steps are actually three. The first step is you need to do your research, but the research in this case will be a little different. You can actually go and, and Google about, you know, what does AI mean, let's say in finance, or what does AI mean, let's say in software engineering. And I'll actually be going over these two examples in detail. But if it is you're working in some other domain, then you actually need to go in, into those particular specific websites that's of interest to you. and. Find out the keywords uh, that will tell you exactly the use cases because finance is, is a huge domain. Software engineering is a huge domain. What are exactly the use cases that have the need of, of applied machine learning and AI? You need to find them out first. Step number two is you need to understand the skills that you need to build along with a basic understanding of uh, machine learning in order to then have hands on expertise in that particular domain. What does that mean? That means is only knowing the basic concepts, uh, you know, the, about the keywords is not going to land you a job of AI in finance or AI in software engineering. You really need to have hands on expertise because in every single realm, there are different level of platforms. Sometimes it is, you know, software as a service. Sometimes it could be, uh, you know, a different, uh, uh, you know, cloud based uh, platforms altogether. So the platforms where you code or the languages where you code in are extremely sensitive to the realm that you are in. And I will show you examples of that as well. So it is extremely important to understand what are the skills that you need to hone so that then you can apply for a job in that particular realm. And step number three is build your digital portfolio. Anything which is AI, anything which is machine learning or data science has to have a digital portfolio for the candidates. The hiring managers are always going to see what it is that you have contributed to the society. That means how legitimate is your knowledge in the real world. What that means is you need to have not just your resume and your LinkedIn, but you also need to have proof that you can code. And that can be in terms of a GitHub link or that can also be in terms of a, a you know, a code base that you then hold 
post on your website. So these three things actually build your digital dossier, which is extremely important for you to apply to an AI related job. Now let's go into details as how you would go about the job search. Uh, so first of all, the research and then how to go about understanding the skills. OK, so you are in finance and then you want to get into AI. So the use cases that you can actually go by and this is not an exhaustive use case, but this is I'm just going by preliminary research that I conducted and I'll be uh, linking the, the website in the description box below. So some of the major use cases that are in and around are trading, uh, investing, banking, lending and fraud detection. So all of this have inbuilt, uh, you know, AI uh, requirements or they can be our applied machine learning uh, ways in, in order to improve uh, to each and every one of these use cases. And so the first step, once you figured out the, these keywords, then the next step would be in order to understand the skill sets. And then what you will be doing is you will be clubbing the word machine learning or ML along with each and every one of these words. So ML and trading, ML and investing, uh, uh, ML and banking and ML and fraud in, in LinkedIn. And then we will be doing doing a search in order to understand the skill set. So that is the order in which we will be looking at. Now let's talk about what each and every one of these uh, use cases show you that, that what, are, what are the basics, what are some of the, uh, you know, you possible projects that you need to have hands on experience in, in order to then be able to do a job well in that in these particular uh, use case domains. Well, some of the cases that that can pop up are predictive modeling. So in, in case if you're doing uh, if you're working on investment, then you want to make sure that is this investment going to be worth your while tomorrow or not. So anything in which you can start forecasting for for future, then that is actually predictive modeling. So you have the need for predictive modeling in in your investment and, and trading. And then again, there is uh, the need for smart querying because in again, banking, the amount of information is immense. So you don't want all of the inf information being bombarded at you you know right away so there should be a way to query the data in a right way and also you know find uh, your discard missing information make sure the data is is you know pre-processed in, in a good way so this is more on the lines of data science in banking uh, that's the sort of jobs then you're looking at then of course there is the automated data sheet entry you know in in a lot of cases uh, banking documents they come in the form of PDFs uh, or they can even be PNG uh, you know files and then you need to automatically populate them into a working sheet so you know PDF or PNG to uh, you know Excel sheet or CSV conversions uh, but then that is more you know automated data sheet entry and there are specific tools and methods in order to do that um, and then of course there is anomaly detection or fraud detection so because all transactions are not fraudulent maybe a few of them are so how would you automatically flag uh, such a fraudulent uh, you know activity so these would be some examples of projects that you could then do in order to then uh, embellish your, your portfolio and then look for a job, which is applied machine learning in finance. So say you're a software engineer and you want to get more hands on AI or applied machine learning expertise. What does that entail? So uh, Deloitte came up with a great report and I'm going to be linking that down below as to the use cases that have uh, you know come up or emerged over the uh, last few years. And there's a huge trend from what I see into automated code generation. That is, uh, you know, the people actually don't ha have to write the ML code, but it could be, you know, building blocks or maybe flowchart sort of views. Uh, of course, there's a UI UX uh, end to it as well. But once you have these flow charts, you just bring the building box down below and the automated automatically the, the code gets generated in the back end. So you uh, there is no real need to understand the jargon that, that those particular machine learning uh, building blocks require. Uh, there's this other need for automation. So automation is, is a huge aspect whenever you are trying to do what we called hyper parameterization or finding the best uh, set of parameters that fit your uh, machine learning model. And in this case, there are multiple ways of, of doing hyper parameterization. Of course, you can do a grid search, you can do a random search and you, you can do a particle swarm optimization. But uh, again, there is a, some amount of, of uh, uh, automation that has to go into it. So um, these can actually be done very easily by 
you know, some AI tools. Um, then again, there is a huge push towards cloud platforms as well. Uh, so AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Colab, all of them, uh, they have a lot of building blocks already available. Uh, and then in, in those cases, you don't really need to be a machine learning engineer in order to deploy them. You already have the, the, the data models existing. You just need to know how to tweak them or how in, in order to make sure that they are in the best form. So you need to understand what are the output parameters uh, and, and then what are the metrics uh, that, that you can actually uh, tune and what is uh, what, what are the ways in which you can actually make sure that the model is the best version of what you need. There is one caveat, although that that whenever I see, you know, there's a finance uh, domain or the software domain that I talked about, there is always going to be two ends to it. One is whenever you're working in the development phase. So uh, as an engineer, if you're developing this code, so say you're a software engineer and you're developing such a system that will be automatic code generator. So in that case, the skill level that this, that you need is going to be different from what you will be if you're working as a QA engineer. So as a quality assurance engineer, then you are actually receiving, uh, you know, this uh, uh, maybe building block, which is automatic code generating. In that case, you will have to find or what are the cases in which it's going to fail or you, know, you, you need to understand uh, how to best make a test case for uh, if in, in order to test if this uh, uh, if the software or the, this code is, is good or not. So the, so the the sort of skills that you need for deployment are actually a little different from the, from the skills that you need for QA. With regards to QA, you need to think like a tester. You need to know what could be ways in which things can go wrong. But the main uh, you know, differences between these two would be with respect to uh, the metrics with which you evaluate the system. So as a final component, I want to demonstrate how you would go about searching for the skill sets um, that you would need to acquire and, and demonstrate in order to get a, a you know, AI specialized uh, job. So uh, I wanted to start by looking at the, the finance use case. So in this case, I'm, I'm typing in ML, fraud and risk uh, in the, the area that I want. And let's look at a few jobs descriptions in order to understand what are the skill sets that people are looking for. So in the first one, uh, you will see here that they, are, they start to look for Python and C++. So it's, it's very uh, evident that object-oriented programming is, is very important. So if you do decide to do a hands-on, you know, uh, own research internship like uh, one we are following right now, uh, maybe utilize either of these two programming languages to demonstrate that. Uh, the other thing that I do notice that in, in finance, uh, in, in fintech, uh, there's a lot of requirement for querying large data sets because you typically have huge amount of data sets that that you are mining so that's why here there's a requirement for knowledge with uh, you know large data sets like uh, you know uh, big table cassandra kafka MongoDB. So databases, you need to have working understanding of them. Of course, you know, building the ML models, but again, here they talk about TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn. So you will see that a lot of times the industry actually dictates these uh, toolboxes. So you'd probably need to know in these cases. And they also mentioned that in this case, uh, they would like some amount of information with natural language processing and recommendation systems or anomaly detection uh, per se. So if you can show any uh, research, uh, you know, experience or even to show any projects uh, with you know a code base relevant to all of these three then there's a big chance that you might get that job call um, look let, let's look at one more so in this case uh, we're again looking at uh, a, a similar very similar job description uh, in this case they are definitely looking at OOP again object-oriented programming and um, again is some background in computer science um, they want to you know create new features deploy them um, so and in order to do that in production environment so if you have previous experience in in maybe software engineering or, or working on pre you know, production kind of environment then that'll be a big plus uh, for this particular case um, and again for this case they are actually looking at industry experience so what becomes evident that CEC++ and, and Python are super important uh, understanding 
understanding TensorFlow and, and PyTorch can also be uh, significantly relevant. And uh, we can actually seal the deal if we look at one more. And here again, we are looking at uh, ML for finance related, um, you know, re related work. And again, as we see, there is a huge need for uh, Apache Spark uh, being map reduced. So that means you need to be able to work with large data sets and be able to scale whatever you're building. So that's our search for the skill sets for fintech. Next use case would be again software engineering with AI and I do the same thing. I, I search for AI software engineer and let's look at a couple of job descriptions here. So we're looking at the Apple and in this case, uh, they're looking for again, key qualifications. They're looking for HTTPS, protobuf and JSON. You should be able to understand what they are and, and work with, uh, you know, the, these protocols uh, and again, load balancing RPC map reduce database. So again, in, in both of these, uh, you're probably looking at huge amount of, of of data sets so you need to be able to process them experiences with docker and kubernetes uh, make sure that uh, you have at least some working experience with the docker environment and uh, again appreciation for good api design because most of these times you have to expose the results in a api call so that's why uh, they become relevant um, let's look at a couple more one is by Intel and again it's a deep learning software engineer and here let's look at the requirements so they are trying uh, they, they, they require somebody who has already have uh, you know working experience on projects in uh, data science or distributed systems uh, quality assurance and technical writing of course uh, you'll be uh, required to do that and uh, again defining new execution paths through multiple frameworks and devices so here this is more of a you need to show that you've been able to show communication between multiple devices so anything a little more hardware facing than pure software projects would be uh, very useful in, in this particular case. Um, let's look at some of the requirements. So here they're looking at, again at C, C++, and Python. Uh, again, they want a, a, a core importance to optimization, which makes sense. If you ever go to any hardware companies, you have requirement for optimization so that you can do the same uh, maybe deep learning model, but with very minimal number of parameters. So how do you make sure that you have optimized um, you know, the system level parameters. Uh, again, to, to know with the, to have good working knowledge of the software de development or life cycle for familiarity with the interoperability and GP, GPU programming technology. So, you know, Kubernetes, uh, GPU uh, based programming. So that'll be very intensive to, uh, you know, uh, the, the sort of hardware facing industry. So that's pretty much the, the sort of experience that you require to demonstrate. And then the step number three will be just to build your own research internship or to build some sort of programming portfolio that you can then demonstrate and include in your resume to then apply for the job. So happy job hunting.